Welcome to my video tutorial. Today I'm looking at drag and dictate for and using the command option. This is a fantastic option for adding your own commands and tailoring to exactly what you need. So let's make a start. First I want to look at Word and adding commands in Word that you might not already have or you want to have. So first thing I need to do is select what commands I want. So I'll tap on Word to bring my options at the top and I'm going to have a look to see what I can add. I'm going to go to Tools. First thing I could add is word count that would be useful to bring up a command also referencing tools that would be another great option when you're referencing to bring up automatically using a command so let's give it a go before I start let me show you how you can access all your commands first so for example these are all your built-in commands or commands you've added yourself you can use the command called show available commands window with dragging on and it will open up or you can go to the top, which I'll show you now, click the middle button on your drag and bar, select window and you can also access it by using show available commands. So let me do it with the voice command, show available commands window. And there you go. And this opens up depending on what application you've got open. As you see I've got Microsoft Word open, there's my commands, global commands and also dictation commands that I can use specifically for Word as well. For example, there's all my punctuation, proofreading and text editing and movements. But let's add commands that don't exist. So I want a command for word count and a command for open reference, a command for opening references. So let's make a start. So if I click the middle button, I can go up to tools and select commands there to open up the window or use the shortcut key command plus K. Now the command window is open. I can show you on the left hand corner here. The first option is global. This indicates all the commands that work in any application. Kind of generic. So if I scroll down, these are all the various commands you can use all over your Mac. The applications underneath are specific to that application, so those commands I've added there will only work specifically within those applications. As you can see, Dragon Dictate has got its own commands there as well, and Express Scribe, and so on. So I'm going to go to Microsoft Word because I want to add two new commands. So the first command I want to add is Word Count. So with Microsoft Word highlighted to the left, brings up the window and I can start adding my commands. I'm going to select the plus button here. And you can see with the highlighted grey, I'm ready to put my command in. Now, go top right hand corner, I'm going to move the dragon bar out of the way. I need to give my command a name. So I'm just going to call this word count. Don't get too carried away of adding too much information on your commands because remember you have to remember them. And there again you don't just want it as one word either. So it doesn't make a mistake. So word counts Perfect. I could have put insert word count or open word count, but I'm happy with word count. Again, you can give a description if you want. In this case, I think the command is actually the same as the description, so I'm not going to change that. The context is Microsoft Word. That's fine. That's the application you'll be using it specifically. Now, this is important. Select type. I want you to go down and select a menu item. Because once we select this, we can then access the menu item in Word 2011 on the Mac and then choose what commands we want. So I've now selected menu item. And now if I click the button here, select a menu item, I need to find that word count option. So I do know it's in the tools. So if I go to tools, scroll along, and I should have word count just there. So I'm going to tap word count. And now it's set. You don't have to train it with your voice or anything. Now, bottom right hand corner, select the save button. And it's saved. And you can see it's saved. If I go to the middle window, you can see word count. While I'm here, I'm going to add another quick command, which was open reference. So, click plus again. Again, we've got the command name. Top right hand corner. I need to make a decision of what I want the command to be called. I'm just going to call this open references, I think. It will be fine. So, I'm just going to call that open references. Again, give the description if you required. Again, it's going to work in the context in Microsoft Word specifically. Type, again, go to menu item because I need to find that in 2011 Word menu. Select down and then I believe it's in the view option. And then I should have down there reference tools. So I'm going to select reference tools. 
So I've got open references and got word count. So if I click save, bottom right hand corner, I now have two of these commands. I have word count and I have open references. If you don't want to use certain commands, you can always untick them here and they will not be used. And word count. And you can also see on the actual left of my commands a little silhouette that indicates that this is a user defined command. Right, so let's try them out. I'm going to close the commands window and click save. And the first thing we'll try is open references, see if that works. Open references, word count, and perfect. And that's how easy it is to personalize and tailor your commands to your applications. Be it Microsoft Office or it could be Photoshop, Adobe, it doesn't matter. You can use these commands anywhere. And if you can't access a menu within certain applications, you can use the keystrokes, which I'll show you as well, which is another really handy option. So we'll click OK. So we've used that in Word. Why don't I try that in another application? So I'm going to open up EndNote and see if I can create a couple of commands for EndNote. So what commands can I create for EndNote? A very good command that I'm always getting annoyed having to do is create groups. So I can create a command for create group, it would be good. And search library, create groups and search library will be perfect. So let's go back to Dragon. Remember, command plus K takes us to the command window. If I click the middle button there on the Dragon bar, I can access it through tools as well. Now look to the left here. If you look here, I do not have any options for EndNote time 7 to add the commands. And I really don't want it as global commands, I want it specific to EndNote. So, bottom left hand corner I've got a little plus option. Here, I can get rid of applications I don't want. For example, if I click on Mind View, I could decide I don't want the commands for Mind View. And I click the minus button and I can get rid of them. And it deletes that application. But I'm actually going to add one, I want EndNote in there. So, click plus select new application context and then I'm going to scroll down to EndNote which is right there then select it here on the right EndNote and I can now select open and you'll see that now adds to my left hand side here EndNote 7 but as you can see in the middle there's no commands because I've not added any yet so let's start adding commands I know I want to add two commands create group so create group is the first one so I want to click the plus button and I'm going to go top right hand corner and I'm going to call this create group and it's done again you can add a command description if you want again the context is going to work specifically in EndNote again I need to choose menu item because I'm now going to access the menu in EndNote click the drop down menu and I now need to find the option to create group so if I go down to groups I know it exists there and there it is create group tap that the commands done if I click save bottom right hand corner you can now see in the middle we have EndNote and we have the first command but why me I want to create another command so I want to click plus button and I'm going to call this search library that's another handy option to have when you're using EndNote so again I can give command description context EndNote absolutely fine again I need to access the menu in EndNote so I'll select a menu item now I need to find that option search library so let's have a quick look and there it is in tools and select search library click save bottom right and then we'll see in the middle we have two commands create group and search library now as you see it's actually working so let's close the commands window and turn on Dragon and give it a go. Search library. Go to sleep. And that gives me the option to search the library at the top. And the other command is create group. Wake up, create group. And there we go, create group. I can type in there. So quickly I can say search library brings me up here to search the library and I can create a group quickly there to the left 
So as you can see, there is no limitations to using this, be it on Photoshop, PowerPoint, any application you want. Now let's use a menu item. Why don't we have a look at using keystrokes, shortcut keys. This is another really handy option for you to navigate and do certain things and options. So I'm going to close EndNote and I'm going to create a shortcut with Command plus Shift plus Numeral 3 and that takes a snapshot of your desktop. Really handy option. So let's create a command for that. So again, we we'll click the middle button or Command plus K to select the commands option. Now I want this command to work anywhere so I'm going to select global. And let me have a little look in there and see if it already exists. See there, I've got a capture screen option there. So if I say capture screen it should work. So let me give it a go. Capture screen. Go to sleep. And as you can see, it's captured screen. So you can add any command you want. So let me show you how to actually add them yourself. So let's open up the commands window. You can see that's actually in script mode, but on global, click plus to add your new command. Again, you've got command name. Come up to command name. I'll just call this take picture. Give a description. In this case, I probably would give it a description. I should call this take a, a snapshot. Again, it's a global command. This time, we don't want menu item, we want to choose a keystroke. Just to show you how the keystrokes work. So, the keystroke for this option is, so click the plus button first to add your keystroke. It's command, so I'll tick command. It is shift, so I'll tick shift. And it is numeral three. So, it's not in special characters numeral three, because it's not a special character. So, all I have to type in there is number three. So, all I have to say is take picture and it should take a snapshot. Click save. And if we look here, we can see the keystrokes here. Close the window and I'm going to say take picture. Wake up, take picture. And there it is. It's that easy to do. So let's close that window and bring open Word again. So you can use keystrokes for absolutely anything. There is no limit on using that option. How about websites? Yeah, we can have bookmarks as well. It's another fantastic option. So let's have a look at bookmarking certain web pages. So let me find a web page first. So I'm going to pop open Safari. And let's find something that's quite interesting to me anyway. I'm going to have a little look at mountain biking. That would do nice. So I want to bookmark this website. I mean, I can bookmark it using the bookmark option, obviously, but I like to use it with Dragon and save. So what I'm going to do is copy the link. Close the website. Press the middle button to select the commands option. Go to tools or command plus K and leave it on global. Now, I'm going to add a bookmark this time, so click plus like you would for any command. And I need to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this. Actually, no, I'll call this jump to mountain bike. That's my command. Again, you can give a description if need be. Global command, which is fine. Now, this time it's not a keystroke. Select bookmark. Now I need to paste that URL website command V and paste it there command V. Click save bottom right and now I've got to say jump to mountain bike and jump straight to that website as you can see it's down here in my list. So let's give it a go and because it's a global command it should work anywhere. Jump to mountain bike. And there you go. That's how simple it is to use. Also, another quick look at the commands. I'm going to click Command plus K. Click Command plus K. I'm going to click plus to add another command. Go to top right hand corner. Now on type, we've looked at bookmark for websites. 
we looked at keystrokes for shortcuts and we looked at menu items to access your applications menus. You can actually link to file or folders using the same option. You can even use, if it's not open certain applications or you want to open up applications, you can choose that selection and then choose the application name and it will open it up for you as well, which is another great option. Automator workflow, I don't know if you use that in the Mac, but we can look at that at a later date. And scripts and shell scripts, so we can look at that at a later date. And even using text macros, where you can type in your actual commands and macros that way. So you can see it's endless options using drag and dictate for. But I hope that's a help to get you up and running. Thanks for watching.